Oh, good, good, good. Thank oh, you. We're going to ask you to record. Hello, hello. We have, How are we, you? we have, hi. We have people here. Yes, we do. <laughs> Surprise. How nice. Who do we have? I see faces. I see Myra. There you go. And I see Nancy. And I see Ariel. And I see. And that's Karen. That's Karen. Karen. Yeah. Anybody and else? We, yeah, we should be expecting uh, quite a few more people. Hopefully. I'm, I'm honored to be in such wonderful company. Why, well, thank you. <laughs> How is everybody today? Good, are, thank you. Are you guys all from the New York area? No. no. <laughs> really? No. no. How did you find each other? That program I, t I mentioned to you, the uh, Food Freedom Journey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're all over the place. Oh, where, so where is, I know, Myra, I know where you are. Yeah. So where's Nancy from? London, Ontario, Canada. Oh, Ontario. Oh, great. Ontario. London, Ontario. That's still East Coast at time there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so not the middle of the night. And Ariel, where are you from? I'm from Powell River, British Columbia. Oh, now you're on the other side. Wow. <laughs> I'm on the other side. <laughs> you, got, you guys have had a little bit of significant weather this year so far, haven't you? We've had some crazy stuff. Actually, we're sitting now with about four or five inches of snow, which is very, very rare for us that came on Christmas Day. So oh, it was no kind of nice for Christmas, but I'm kind of done with it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, but is that really that rare? Where, which part, where in BC are you actually related to where the so mountains are where the snow is? Sorry, related to where? Where all the mountains are where the snow is. <laughs> well... Because the Rockies run right up, right up through... Yeah, so we're, we're inland. We're actually in a, on the Sunshine Coast, if you look ah. at a, a, a map. So it's pretty rare for us to get snow. You know, ah. we get it now and then, but it's pretty rare. It's actually like minus seven outside right now, Celsius, which wow. is... Wow, it's pretty cold. Know. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's pretty rare for us, and it's go and it's not going up much higher. So that's yeah, that's pretty rare. But yeah. Well, I'm in New York. In case anybody's interested, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a slightly mild day for middle of the, middle of the winter in New York. But how's I'm, Karen I'm, where I'm, she I'm is? Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> Where's Karen? Karen's in Erlang in Germany. Really. Yeah, and we've got very mild weather. It's been up in the 30s and 40s and no snow and mm. it's supposed to drop down again, but we'll see. 30s and 40s uh, Celsius. Not Celsius, no, no. Fair, I'm, going, I'm still in Fahrenheit mode. I haven't gone to Celsius yet. Oh, so you're a transplant? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Um, a friend of mine who just got back from visiting her family there, but she didn't make that much mention about um, about the uh, winter because I think she had snow. And uh, we have a few other folks. Yep. Oh, and Michaela can't make it. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we're recording it, so anything yes. that well, I might actually get to say that would be profound enough for anybody to want to listen again, uh, I'll make sure I'll, I'll make sure you have the link. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, so uh, I guess how much time do we have? Uh, I mean, I have lots of time if you guys want to spend lots of time, um, because I tend to talk a lot. And then next thing I know, you know, an hour goes by and I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to talk and ask questions and discuss things. I don't have a formal presentation here, uh, but just as a way of background, um, I am a uh, an energy healer. I'm trained in various different forms of natural healing methods uh, including nutrition and those kinds of things but my primary job is helping people resolve old psychological trauma and emotional wounds uh, through work that is known as energy psychology using a technique that is known as emotional freedom techniques called EFT for short and uh, some of the folks uh, at the um, scientific end of the EFT practitioners who've been doing this for a long time, have particular interests in this scientific connection 
between psychological, emotional, unresolved issues and difficulties with weight management. And I, I know since that seems to be uh, probably what your group is all about, uh, I'm sort of an open book to share anything that I might be able to share from my perspective, my knowledge, or it just, you know, just to bounce things around um, as to uh, how um, looking at looking at ourselves uh, and looking at the way we judge ourselves or looking at you know the difficulties of managing weight problems if that's what we're managing uh, how that can be uh, looked at from a, from a different lens you know and what we might be able to do with that information um, so I've been doing this work about 20 years or so uh, I am certified as an expert practitioner in EFT for what that's worth <laughs> um, and the whole point of the EFT is to really get it at the root causes of psychological emotional disturbances and why that would be important in in, in, uh, in this context is that I think it's pretty well understood um, from a psychological point of view that um, some weight problems uh, are also um, emotional eating issues and if we don't really resolve the reason why those emotional issues uh, are there they're just gonna keep happening and there's no amount of talking yourself out of it uh, that's gonna really resolve the problem at a root cause which is one of the reasons we believe that why it's so difficult for people to really wrap their hands around managing weight you know that's one way of looking at it. another way of looking at it is just um, lifestyle and sometimes lifestyle is just culture so if you are usually to go up you know it's no surprise that in the United States uh, in particular and and you know a lot of people have you know eat like we do in the United States a, a lot of people uh, were never really very well educated on proper nutrition um, and just believe that you know eating the Amer standard American diet SAD sad for short <laughs> um, is is what we're supposed to do we grew up in a culture where the dairy industry wanted us to drink milk you know the more glasses the better and uh, and the cereal manufacturers uh, were creating this heart healthy stuff but, you know, which which is really all processed grains and we literally get addicted to to our lifestyle choices and and the food that we eat because the food that we eat stimulates our our biology in certain ways that might make us feel good or feel satiated I mean just the sense of it shoving stuff in your mouth um, if it's chocolate or ice cream it's always better <laughs> or coffee <laughs> things that we can really be stimulated by these things and then you know maybe in my own case you know I'm, I'm looking more for the stimulation or the being satiated feeling as boredom or uh, or a, a substitute for some other need that I feel is not being met for me whether it's psychological emotional and most of this stuff quite frankly is, is probably unconscious or subconscious and very often some of it is conscious the way we would treat it with EFT wouldn't be to just say, um, okay, you have these problems and there's nothing you can do about it, so let's, let's try to attack it from a coaching perspective where I'm going to help to reinforce good habit. In other words, you know, what are we going to get you to do to resist the urge to eat things that you know aren't good for you? That could be a place to start but we can totally ignore that and just treat uh, the issue as a symptom of a bunch of other unresolved issues very often many of these issues are development psychological let's call it distresses disturbances or complexes that get created as we are being brought into this world as we're in, in ages four to seven and we're learning how to maintain some semblance of self-authority um, you know now that we're not reliant on our mother's bottle or our mother's breast to be fed at some point we want this we want that 
somebody says you can't have that you might say well why can't I have that and you might growing up thinking I will never be deprived of the things that I want and then life doesn't show up that way <laughs> now you're, you know life shows up where we're deprived of many many things we want and one of the one things we actually do have control over even though it seems that we don't have a control over it sometimes is what we pick up and put in our mouth <laughs> So we get to the point where we're old enough to think we know better, but we still have a difficult time stopping the arm from reaching out and the hand from grabbing that wonderful, luscious thing that we definitely want to put on our mouth that another part of us definitely doesn't want to put on our mouth. And then we have that struggle going on. Uh, you know, who's in charge? <laughs> so we, we might we might even fall into deeper kind of psychological complexes that tell us that we're really not in charge and we're we're a victim of our own upbringing a victim of our own bodies we're a victim of our genes we're a victim of our thinking we're a victim of uh being weak uh not having the willpower uh i mean who knows i mean you guys know more than i do because you, you're probably discussing this all the time there's probably a huge list of stuff that goes into these categories so would you guys agree that this could be, you know, overall, uh, you know, a common thread to a lot of the difficulties we're trying to work through. Would anybody disagree? No, we've also been talking a lot about inner child work. Yeah. Like okay. healing the inner child. Yeah. Okay, good. And so, also, could you touch on the energy healing part as well? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank so you. to energy healing for people who aren't familiar with it can be considered a very woo-woo weird thing. Uh, but because in order to become certified expert, I have to do a huge amount of reading about the science behind this kind of stuff. Um, this is science that is not generally recognized uh, by the mainstream. So if I were to do Reiki for somebody, you guys familiar with like the idea of what Reiki is? Uh, like you're gonna lay on, on on a table in front of me and I'm going to put my hands over you and I'm gonna channel energy it's like spiritual energy healing that you know you might go to a church or another type of an authority where they were done uh, where they do things like this uh, therapeutic touch was invented uh, by nurse practitioners many many years ago and it became an accepted way of, of treating people in the hospital not medically but it can't do any harm. So who we are as a being, as a physical being, from a from a position of quantum mechanics and actual science is a bunch of vibrations. And right? if you look, you know, inside, you know, with a microscope in, into what makes up my apparently physical body, eventually we get to the point where everything is in motion. And everything that's in motion isn't influenced energetically by signals from other molecules, from other energy sources. Our entire body is built out of a very, very complex, but I would like to say intelligently engineered en uh, energetic system that appears to us in solid form. We go like this, and I feel something solid. <laughs> but if you were to understand it from quantum mechanics, you would realize that this is a collection of cells, which is a collection of molecules, which is a collection of atoms. And the atoms are made up of things like a nucleus and a proton and an electron. And all these things are energetic and in space so far of each other that it might, be, it might as well be the distance between Earth and the sun. When you look at the overall universe, we know there's a lot of objects out there, but there's a lot of space. We don't see that space in our bodies. But that space is a field where all of our experiences, all of our memories, all of our emotions uh, are actually stored in an energetic form. So when we're upset, your body is resonating with the energy profile of a system that we can detect where these upsetnesses are. Um, this is not something when you go to the doctor, he can see because he can't poke you with a needle and pull out, uh, you know, blood and see the upset energy in the blood but he can pull out the blood and look at the platelets in the blood and see where things are sticky and things are not things are dysfunction 
And by doing energy work on somebody, it can have such a profound change in the bioelectrical and biomechanical structure of our body that you can go back in, take another blood sample, and see a change in the blood. So after all of these years of wondering what science is and what subtle energy is and energy healing is, we absolutely have confirmation that energy healing is something that has a dramatic effect, not only psychologically and emotionally, on what we're carrying from the past, but how it ends up physically uh, altering you know, our state in the moment. And that state in the moment is always changeable. So um, we are basically electromagnetic vibrating things. And when you take other electromagnetic vibrating things, like, like my brain waves or my hand, or, or even, you know, a, a little crystal healing uh, implement like this, it literally changes the way the energy field that makes who we are up shift. And when that shift happens, there are shifts that happen in our outside life, in our awareness, in our emotions, as well as the physical body as well. Quick story, I'm a ski instructor. One day I'm having uh, lunch with a good friend of mine who is one of the top ski instructors in the world, and he was complaining about his knee, and I happened to have this in my pocket. Like, I know you might think this is crazy. It's probably something you don't know about me. I'm going to get back to the hand raise. But um, what the hell? We're just sitting here munching. Why don't, why don't we do this? So I hold this device over his knee, and it starts moving around, and it does its thing. I'm not moving. I'm just holding it. And, and the, this is the electromagnetic healing device, which is interacting with the field of energy around his knee. And at one point, a few minutes later, he goes, I know this kind of sounds weird, but I actually think I feel that inside my knee. And I'm going, yeah, well, no surprise, because it's actually doing something, even though you can't see it. Okay, who had their hand raised? Somebody had their hand raised. Yeah, just uh, make sure you unmute yourself. Um, you guys, so yeah. So, question, can you do energy healing on yourself? Yes. Hmm. Let me get you a book. Let me grab it. I'll be right back. Heather is not able to get in, and um, Michaela is not coming. So they're happy about the recording. Okay. So, um, yes, you can. Uh, and there are many ways of doing it. Of course, one of the things that's interesting about in any kind of healing work like this is that if you allow yourself to surrender to the intention or the expertise of someone who has more experience and more capacity, you might like you might likely get better results. But what we don't under, always understand is ultimately it's up to us to find the path through healing. Um, and and there are many things to do. And of course, in this path to healing, we might also find the right coaches and the right healers, you know, that really have the ability to work with us in a way that, that we feel is worth paying them to do it. But uh, it, this might be backwards, but this is a book called The Healing Code uh, by Alexander Lloyd with Ben Johnson. The Healing Code. And what I like about this book is this book is basically just like doing in-depth EFT work that I do. But instead of using the tapping on the acupuncture points to shift energy, they show you how to create energy with your intention through your fingertips and treat yourself in different sections of your body. But if you go through the book and read the book, you'll get a great understanding of all the various different ways that we need to bring healing into our lives. We need to heal all of our wounds. We need to heal all of our judgments. We heal, need to forgive ourselves for all the screwed up things that we did. And we need to learn how to forgive all the other people in the world for all the screwed up things that they did. And until we do all this stuff, healing, you know, we're just like trying to say, all right, just fix this broken finger or fix this, fix this uh, arthritic knee. We're not really using energy that is available to us to heal all aspects of our life. EFT happens to be a tool that you can learn to do for yourself. It's not a healing energy that I provide for you when I do it as a coach, 
what I'm doing is I'm coaching you how to tap through acupuncture points which are stimulating the energy system of your nervous system and the brain at the neurological level so when you have a bad thought that feels bad when you look at yourself you step on the scale and going oh my god I'm never gonna lose any more weight it's just getting worse instead of better if you have a, a, a noticeable bad feeling that goes along with that statement then when you tap on the acupuncture points that we use in EFT you're sending a signal into the brain that says you're okay heal that thought and the brain understands how to take that energy and shift it and all of a sudden the brain itself is going to be less active in terms of making what could have been a problem for you a problem so as you get on the scale and you see the number you don't like it's just a number you don't like and it doesn't have a psychological emotional component anymore and these are the things that you can learn to do for yourself EFT is created to be a self-applied healing mechanisms it's just that in order to heal the most difficult parts of your emotional life and your psychological life you know there's going to be a natural protection in your subconscious somewhere that's not really going to allow you to feel comfortable getting at all of those things that we're trying to avoid that feel so difficult to get at which is why they're still there so working with a coach like me we can uh, you're doing the energy healing by doing the tapping and I'm just guiding you on the tapping sequence but what we're doing when we attach this tapping sequence to deeply held thoughts feelings and emotions and memories we are literally changing the way in the brain is wired so the part of the brain that's wired to say I can't lose this weight all of a sudden doesn't howl the same strength over you anymore and then if you do enough of this work and you decide to move forward uh, with a new intention to lose weight you know and you've got a good strategy that 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 you know will work but you're having difficulty staying away from you know those really delicious foods that you hate to give up every time you have an impulse that goes against your desire you know it's, con it's like I desire this but I also desire to lose the weight you feel that there is a conflict and now in this conflict you go even though I have this conflict I'm still an okay person even though I might actually go and eat this entire tub of ice cream when I just yesterday claimed that I was going to do everything I can to lose weight <laughs> that I'm still an okay person <laughs> you know so you can start very very easily and by tapping well you can set up a situation where you've forgiven yourself for your weakness or you might actually get to the point where the desire for it isn't as strong and you might take a spoonful or two and you go you know what I'm you know no I know I want to eat this whole thing but the spoonful or two I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna be good with that and put that away and now you have a whole new process and as you start to condition yourself to behave in ways that you feel good about that's also gonna start to counter condition things and you're gonna be able to develop uh, new skills and self-care you know but we need to learn about those things if we're still being um, um, influenced by uh, emotional factors that may be subconscious or forgotten about but they're there forcing us to do things against our better will and better judgment you know we're just gonna have our own thought about that you know as well and that thought uh, psychologically emotionally is not a good thought for us we want to be moving towards things that empower us but when we're energetically stuck in places that we've been influenced by from previous experiences in our lives we you know we might have 40 years of trying to lose weight without success and it's kind of hard to combat that idea that now I could do something different but when we add energy healing into it we are shifting things and now things literally are different than they were before okay that that sounds like a mouthful so I'm gonna stop and, and see what people might want to talk about based upon any anything I just said well, what is the tapping actually doing yeah the tapping is actually percussing uh, the um, the the electromagnetics of acupuncture points and because we've been doing this tapping work for uh, 1970 1980 almost 25 years 20 years 
with amazing success helping people in all different kinds of ways in their life. Um, we know it works and, and of course now we have a better understanding of how it works neurologically. So when we tap with intention to change something, we're, we're providing an energetic signal that's being picked up through the acupuncture meridian system that's carrying this energy into our nervous system and it literally has the ability to reshape the, um, the direction of our neurons that get fired when we think about things that bother us. So an extreme example, if you have someone who's suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder is a thing that came up uh, for war victims, correct? So they come back with PTSD and now their life is screwed up. And even though 25 years later, they have exposure to the best therapies, the best counseling, the best drugs we can possibly come up with, um, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and they still can't get a night's sleep without having bad memories from the war. This is post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, when you come along with tapping and you tell those horrible war stories while you're tapping on these acupuncture points, it's counter-conditioning the part of the brain that remembers the trauma and it shuts off the signaling from the trauma mechanisms in the brain to say, this is still happening, this is a still a problem. And when you tap and collapse the memory of most of the most horrible uh, memories that you have, all of a sudden, all these years later, all, the, all of the symptoms of, of PTSD are, are no longer clinically registering. Literally can cure post-traumatic stress disorder. So the tapping itself is a signaling message into the deep recesses of the brain that's, that allows the brain to uh, shift what's happening in the moment. And in that shifting, it creates an open space for us to be able to imprint uh, either a, a neutral idea, in other words, this situation no longer bothers me, or even though I had this situation, I can now replace it with a, a different thought, a different feeling, and move on with my life. So it can be quite profound when we do this tapping work. EFT is considered tapping, because we're tapping on the acupuncture points. Uh, because we're really changing the, the, the neurology of our belief system and and the way uh, psychological trauma is held in, in, in the memory system uh, of our body and, and our brain. Uh, I hope that wasn't too much of a technical explanation, but I, I thought it deserved a little bit of understanding of literally what happens when we tap. When, when we originally discovered energy tapping, it was a combination of things where they were using psychology and, and, and um, traditional Chinese medicine. So they were looking at your, your emotional problems and your psychological problems as disturbances in, uh, in the qi that flows through the various different energy meridians that's described in traditional Chinese medicine as acupuncture. All right, so with, with that concept, uh, they were, people had strong psychological problems that weren't being addressed with drugs or traditional psychotherapy that when we were tapped on had like remarkable shifts like almost instantaneously that were never clinically ever seen before it's almost to the point where they were unbelievable i mean it's you know i have this problem how can this problem be fixed just because i did some tapping and then they started to explore and experiment and realize they could create a simple system that people could use uh, this technology to tap on anything that bothered them at all and it usually results in, in an improvement and if you do it seriously enough and get deep enough into our history we can resolve things from the past that might have been troubling us whether we're even still aware of it or not all our entire lives so th that that is tremendously powerful and and the way the okay. chinese think about it is that anything that's wrong there's always a block of energy flow or a disturbance or an imbalance so that they thought that by tapping on acupuncture points, which is another way of stimulating the meridians without having to put needles in, that that's what we're doing. But now we understand that we're just using the active points as a signaling mechanism and we're going much, much deeper into the neurological roots of our problems. Were we going to try the tapping? Uh, oh, I'm happy to run everybody through a tapping thing if that's what you want. I just want to see if anybody has any more questions about the conversation about what kind of possible psychological emotional things might be contributing to my other problems you know so i just want to make sure everybody had a uh, thing now if if we don't tap what i'll do 
is I'll make sure that um, Myra has some some cheat sheets that I've put together uh, that that she can email and share with all you guys. But I'm happy to run through uh, the tapping process if everybody wants to do that. That wasn't what I was here to do today, but I'm obviously happy to do that. What would everybody like? Who who would like to add anything to the conversation? Any questions? Yeah, Andy. Um. So I, I'm new to tapping. I've never heard of it until okay. recently. Um, is this something you can do once and see progress? Is this something that goes on with time? Is it like therapy where it takes months? Good question. Three good questions. Okay. Let me answer them. Yes, there are occasions where you can tap once and get lucky. <laughs> and all of a sudden, poof, your problem is gone. Uh, and this is a very well-known phenomenon that especially works for beginners called a, a one-minute miracle. <laughs> it does happen sometimes, but it's not likely that we are going to completely um, detangle uh, and, and uh, uh, any long-standing psychological, emotional issues just, just by tapping once. But, but tapping is pretty amazing. And then occasionally we tap once and we fix something so remarkable that we think that every time we tap, we just can spend a minute tapping and it'll fix everything. Okay. So it doesn't always work that way. Uh, usually it works better when you have a goal for what you want to change in your life and you have a coach like me to work with you over a series of sessions so that we can get tapping to the point where we're starting to un. Uh, undis uh, uh, disclose uh, all the underlying patterns that we really recognize have been troubling problematic for us so that when we get at these things once we tap on them if we're very thorough in our process we can actually de-link the memory from a disturbing event from the way our brain activates our fight-or-flight system or not once it stops doing that it's no longer a problem now, in the case of PTSD, like with the war veterans and things, you know, they would come in for treatment and they would say, well, it's not just this one horrible thing. I have dozens of horrible things that haunt me. And there's an interesting thing with the EFT that um, when you start working on the one or two or three or four main things that you can remember that were really troubling, you know, the, the neurolo neurologist will tell you that think that neurons wire together, they fire together. So when you have a something bad happen, it wires a certain programming into your brain. Because your brain needs to know about it. And it needs to try to avoid something bad from like that happening again. So when the next thing comes along and happens, it goes, does this remind me of anything else? He goes, oh yeah, it's in the same category as this bad thing. And it wires together and it makes it stronger. So what the tapping does is it undoes that wiring. So as we work on one or two or 10 or even 20 very, very important old unresolved traumas, the 100 other ones that we have that are all wired together no longer have any impact on us. So the two reasons this is different from long-term therapy is because when we tap, we are re actually resolving the root cause issues and that they're wired all together so that you can see the shift happening all at once and because we are actually doing something energetically which talk therapy does not do does not do does not offer we are literally making an energetic we're not just understanding why we are the way we are and how we got there we're literally changing uh, our neurological patterns that are holding who we are in place and allowing us to move forward free of those things. So um, it's very, very rare that I work with anybody over a long term unless people just like working with me with maintenance as a coach. Typically, I get involved with people who really, really want to work through important life problems. And in six to 12 weeks, pretty much, you know, we're, we're done with it. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So um, how does this compare to the. Um the the eye movement therapy and it's the, very uh, very it's eye. very 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 similar it's okay. basically working on the same way but the eye movement therapy does something a little bit different and true EFT practice uses 
components of the eye movement therapy. When we move our eyes, there's a complex, it's not completely well understood, of how the eye movements are connected to neurological patterning in the brain. And when I tap with people, uh, not only do I tap through the acupuncture points, but I also tap on another acupuncture points where I have them do a series of eye movements. Because if we're working on something that's traumatic, there's probably a glitch in the brain's pattern that can be seen in an interruption of smooth movement of the eyes. Um, but EMDR is a very is a, is like a sister uh, process to EFT. But with EMDR, uh, you have to work with someone who is a in this country anyway a licensed therapist and a trained EMDR practitioner because you're dealing with stuff that is traumatic that will bring up uh, a a re-experience of a traumatic episode and you need to have somebody there that can help manage that instead of re-traumatizing you where EFT is much more gentle you don't have to get to that level and it's so gentle that you can apply it on yourself with very little knowledge of you know the details of how your brain works you don't have to be a licensed psychologist to use it um, and that and that's the main difference so a lot of people see EFT only as you know, you know, just tapping on the main acupuncture points, but in my EFT is more thorough, and I use the process that involves a series of eye movements as well. And it's the combination of those things. The eye movements also seem to work so that as we have the two parts of our brain, the one that understands things emotionally, intelligently, and the other one that understands things analytically and fear-based, are they're balancing each other out, you know. Um, and, and the bilateral stimulation by tapping and moving your eyes in different directions, that's just another way of stimulate, uh, uh, stimulating the brain to make a change. EFT is just a lot easier. Um, many, many clinical studies show basically on par effectiveness uh, with EFT and EMDR, but the fact that so many more people have access to EFT just makes it in general that much more effective because you could apply it to everything and anything you can imagine with, with, with very little risk or no risk at all of re-traumatizing yourself. As a matter of fact, the countering to the re-traumatizing happens when we start the EFT process by tapping here repeatedly on the side of the hand. That's already signaling the brain to be alert for what's happening. And then what we do is we actually talk about our problem. We say, even though I have this problem, we're admitting. We're not trying to avoid it. We're trying to tune in to what it feels like to recognize the problem that we're experiencing. Even though I have this problem, uh, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. As it's just a blanket statement that is a more of a positive accepting statement uh, so that our mind can take the two statements. I have this problem, but I'm okay. And while it's the brain is being stimulated by the tapping point, it can reintegrate these ideas. So all of a sudden, even though I have this problem, I deeply accept myself, the level of how we experience the problem as a disturbance comes down. And it comes down assisted by tapping through the various different points. So let's say I'm worried that I have this eating problem and, and you know, the holidays are here. And I'm going to be even in more trouble. I might just try take a very cavalier, entertaining point of view and say something like, even though I know I'm going to overeat this holiday season, I'm just going to have to accept the fact that I'm stuck. <laughs> you know, being a holiday overeater, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I know I'm going to overeat this holiday season, and I never follow through on my New Year's resolutions to go to the gym and diet, I'm sure I'll be okay anyway. Even though I know I always overeat on the holidays, I choose to be just a little bit more conscious to make sure it doesn't get too out of hand. And then with that setup statement, I'll go through the tapping points while I reiterate those things. Yeah, I'm probably going to overeat like I always do. <laughs> and this is true for me. I've already gained five pounds. <laughs> those darn cookies are so irresistible. Why do I do this to myself every year? You would think I would know better by now. Well, I'm just a creature of all bad habits. Boy, those cookies look delicious. 
even though I can't resist the cookies and I know I'm going to overeat, I still believe I have the capacity to get back down to a reasonable weight when, if and when, I really put my mind to it. And then that would be one simple tapping round. And believe it or not, that is effective, at least on some subtle way, of dealing with the subconscious impressions that you that are really driving our desire uh, to want to overeat, if, if that's what your issue is, you know. Um, the issue gets a little bit more interesting when we have more complex problems. Uh, one of the things that I do is I act as a EFT a specialist coach for women with breast cancer because it's my feeling that anybody in that situation with that diagnosis is under a tremendous amount of stress and by tapping with EFT it immediately starts to reshape the way uh, our body and our parts of the brain uh, act, uh, react to stress. So just the fact that you know you have a cancer diagnosis is very, very stressful. Um, but what I do is I teach people how to manage stress. Uh, not just the stress of having cancer, but the stress of all the things that goes along with having cancer. Because the more stress that we're under, the more we are being influenced by the West the way stress uh, is um, affecting us. And when stress affects us enough, and sometimes this is very subtle, and sometimes it's even unconscious, we don't realize that our body has shifted into the fight or flight mode, where proper digesting and healing is not really possible. Because in fight or flight mode, you know, we were built, designed to be able to identify danger and run away from it or learn to defend ourselves or learn how to just basically you know surrender and die with with the least amount of trauma i mean think about you running away from saber-toothed tigers when we had no weapons in the old days and this part of our brain is still very much active running the show at the most primary level so the things that happen to us in our day-to-day -day experiences that seem stressful even if our mind says, I shouldn't be this stressed about it, our mind has no ability to influence the autonomic reaction of the stress response system at the level of the amygdala gland inside the brain and the hippocampus that says, go into stress mode. Because our body is always trying to create um, a, a, a survival mechanism is, is, is the first thing that happens. So things like learning how to be psychologically more gentle on ourselves, learning how to forgive and love ourselves, learning how to digest and, and, and to portion food appropriately. This is not on the list of the part of the brain that wants you to react to stress. Um, so there's no way of sort of thinking our way out of the problem when the problem is in our neurological wiring. So tapping directly addresses our neurological wiring and just the act of tapping can be seen by anybody who hooks you up to a biofeedback device that's, that's designed to measure your level of stress, instantly starting to take the stress patterns down. And when we take the stress patterns down, our body is not automatically flooding us full of stress hormone, which definitely messes with the brain. It's very, very difficult for us to be loving and hopeful and feeling wonderfully satisfied with everything when our brain is being uh, filled with uh, stress hormones. So can so, we do a quick quick round? Uh, sure. Um, normally when I do this, uh, I have people think about something that stresses them. And then when we tap, we notice if we, if it changes things very much. But I wouldn't want to do that here because I have no control over what you might pick. You might pick something that stresses you so much because it's so important to you that I don't know if you're likely to re-injure yourself just by focusing on it. So I'm just going to say, if there was something that you would like to be fixed, if it could be fixed in a minute, just throw it out there and let your mind's subconscious imagination play with it. Uh, another thing that is sometimes done is people assess their ability to take in a full breath. Because it sim simply with, by tapping relaxes us, it might also increase respiration. I've done other things with people where I have them 
you know, turn around, turn their head, and see how far they can point behind them. And with the intention to go further, we tap, and then all of a sudden, they go past their sticking point. There's many ways around that. When I teach people who I'm helping with, um, with cancer, the last thing I talk about in the first session is cancer. Because as soon as I go there, all of their problems, you know, that they would like to fix related to that part of their life, is going to come rushing in and has the potential to emotionally overwhelm them. So what I do is I say, let's think about something that has no consequence. Let's make something up. Is there something that bothered you that happened to you in the last few days that has nothing to do with cancer? Maybe you know uh, your your husband said something that you, that uh, that was unloving and it, and it bothered you, or that you were talking to your aunt Tilly on the phone. And she said something that you completely disagree with and you felt you were being disrespected. Do you notice if you think about those things that you can still feel kind of upset about it? And then when we have that thing of no consequence, I have them notice as they think about it on a scale of 0 to 10, how much disturbance might still be there. Guess. If I'm still really angry about that thing that Aunt Tilly said to me that disrespected me when I was on the phone, and I would really like to call her and give her a piece of my mind, but I'm just too mad to do it. How mad am I? And then somebody might say, well, if that was me, if that really actually happened to me, or here's a story that matches something like that, yeah, I'm still pretty angry. Scale of 0 to 10, how angry are you? Yeah, it's kind of up there. It's kind of like a 10. No, it's not really a 10, because with a 10, you'd be really mad. I am really mad. Okay, good. And we start tapping. And we say, even though I'm still really mad about this thing that happened, I deeply and completely accept myself. So, guys, just follow along. Repeat after me. If there was something you're really mad about, put it in the back of your mind. But don't worry about it. This is just giving you a demonstration of how tapping works, okay? And then when you see uh, the, the stuff that, uh, that Myra sends you via email, uh, you can get a sense of it. And anybody wants at any time, they can get back to me anytime, and I could do a one-on-one -on -one with you, complimentary, to show you how we can apply this to something specific that might be bothering you, okay? The first thing we do is we start tapping on the side of the hand. And we think about the thing that we're bothered about or upset about. And we give it a name. And if, in my case, if it was the fight I had with Aunt Tilly on the phone, that's the name of the problem, Aunt Tilly. Even though I have this Aunt Tilly problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this Aunt Tilly problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Everybody tap along so you get to understand how the mechanical feelings go. Even though I have this Aunt Tilly problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Now, the first thing we're going to do now is really focus on the Aunt Tilly problem. And the problem is I'm still mad about what happened with Aunt Tilly. So I'm focused on the feeling, the negative energy of that emotion. And I start tapping on the acupuncture point, which is right at the upper inside corner of my eye socket, right where the eyebrow sort of meets the bridge of the nose. I take two fingers and start tapping repeatedly, percussively, just like that, while I'm focused on how mad I still am at my Aunt Tilly. All right? So that's the first place. And then we now move to another acupuncture point, which is at the outside corner of the eye socket, right over here, two points right in there. And I think about and silly. And now I start tapping on a point that is at the directly underneath the eye socket at the top of the bone there, right in there. This is called the under eye point. And I'm focused on how mad I still am about this whole bad thing that went down with Antilly. Alright, this Antilly problem. Then I tap directly underneath the nose, above the upper lip, right in there. This Antilly problem. <laughs> okay <laughs> on the chin point right underneath the uh, mouth right in here not at the point of the chin but the chin point which is right here in in the space between your lower lip and the point of your chin right in there and we see this antilly problem and of course in your mind you're substituting something or nothing you're just learning where to tap and how to tap the next point we tap on is called the collarbone point the collarbone is the bone that connects your shoulder to the center of your chest. And the underside of the tap of the collarbone meets the breastbone right here. So here's, here's the middle 
of my breastbone at the at the sternum notch here and if, here's the end of my collarbone and if I go slightly down it rolls off the end of the collarbone into a little soft hollow at the underside of the intersection of the collarbone and the breastbone so I could tap or rub in there I'll take a few fingers and I really like to pound in that spot nicely while I'm figuring out what to do with all of these angry feelings towards Aunt Tilly for the crappy phone call that we had the other day it's Aunt Tilly problem the next point is called the underarm spot because if I lift my arm up and I go into my underarm and then I drop my hand down about four inches so I'm tapping right along the side of my rib cage right over here you might even find a, a spot in there that's a little sore that's the underarm spot I tap in there while I'm really focused on this Aunt Tilly problem now it's important to keep focusing on the problem uh, because when we focus on the problem the memory brings up the energetic signature of the experience itself and that's what we're doing we're, we're tapping to send new information into the neurological system that holds that as a problem and we're changing our relationship to it so that's a quick round of EFT and typically what we do is we stop we take a breath and we reassess and we say all right well when I think about how mad I am about what happened with me and Antoni last week does it still feel the same and there might be a part of me that says well if I was at an 8 out of 10 before now it feels like I'm still mad but now you know I'm mad about something else and then I'll start tapping on that because as long as there's a feeling there that I can tap on the tapping will be effective it might bring it down to a point where it's a four or a three and I say that's good enough well why not continue to tap and we might tap some more and say even though I'm still angry about Antilly I deeply please accept myself even though I continue to have some of this bad feeling about this conversation with Antilly I deeply please accept myself even though I still feel some of this disturbance from this Antilly problem I deeply please accept myself and we go through another round starting with the eyebrow this remaining Antilly disturbance side of the eye this remaining Antilly disturbance underneath the eye this remaining Antilly disturbance all the reasons why I'm still mad at Antilly, all the crazy things that she said to me, all the ways I feel annoyed and aggravated by this experience, all the negative emotions I still carry because of this experience I had with Antilly, and then maybe one more time back to the side of hand, even though I had this big blowout with Antilly on the phone, and part of me probably never wants to talk to her again, but I know another part of me says that's ridiculous. I'm going to have to call and make up with her sooner or later. I deeply and completely accept myself and all the feelings and thoughts I have about this problem. And then you stop and you might notice after two rounds of something that is um, not that important, but significant enough to notice the disturbance, that your disturbance about the whole thing has gone down. And very often, once the disturbance has gone down, the stress associated with the event is no longer active and when that happens the part of our brain the part of our mind that is resilient to these kinds of things comes up and he goes you know can't please everybody all the time you know sometimes Aunt Tilly can be a bit of a jerk you know maybe there was something I did that provoked her and maybe part of this is my problem you know maybe I'm big enough to let this go and move past this all of a sudden the part of your cognition that knows how to reframe and, and this in a, in a more positive light uh, comes back online. And now you're able to make better decisions. The, the reason that I do this for people with breast cancer in particular is because when they're stressed out about their circumstances, they have so much information that they have to absorb and so many important decisions that feel like life or death decisions to make about their treatments that when they're in stress mode, they're ability to be able to think logically and rationally is severely compromised so that's why tapping on stress uh, points is very very important and also as I mentioned before we're in stress the body is sending stress hormones into the body not healing hormones so all of the desire that they have to do everything possible to improve their health is being compromised by the level of stress that they're experiencing so if you look at overeating as an aspect of well are we as healthy as we want to be um you know we might be concerned about our weight because we don't like the way it looks we don't like the way it feels but we also might be worried about our health 
And if we think that there's an aspect of us that's never going to get to the ideal healthy weight we want, there's going to be another part of us that thinks we're in trouble and we're out of control, and that's going to automatically create a, an un, ongoing low-level stress that can be managed with EFT tapping. I know that's a lot of information, <laughs> but uh, I, I did want to I did want to throw as much of that out as I can. And it could be that something that you do, like with healing codes, since the process is very similar, but instead of tapping, you energize yourself. I mean, that might be something that might be just as effective. Uh, there's no scientific evidence that suggests it, but the process is so similar to EFT that neurological signaling by tapping on acupressure points is not the only way to change you know, the energy of our body system. But it is the simplest thing that we can learn to do for ourselves. And it, I believe is probably the most effective thing that we can instantly do for ourselves to immediately make a profound change in our level of stress in the moment. But you know what? I'm having an issue with a long-term friend. And um, by just doing this round of tapping, I remembered what started it. That's so the that, other That's the other advantage. Yeah. Very often this stuff is unconscious and we do tapping and all of a sudden memories from the past pop up. And then now, all of a sudden, now we can point the EFT, not to Antilly last week, but what happened all those years ago. Very good, Myra. Do you want to use your example uh, as a, uh, a little exercise that we can tap together so everybody else can see how this works in, in a client-coach situation? Sure. I was you just want... going to let you know, Steve, you asked us at the beginning of the call how long we have. Normally our calls are for an hour, so I don't okay. know how all the other ladies are. I'll have to pull off at noon, but just so I'll that you I'll tell know. you what. What I'll do is I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep the rest of the time open for everybody uh, to have a discourse. And if anybody wants to stay on uh, past the hour, if you want to, I'll work with Myra. So you can, you can, also, you can all tap along because whatever I'm tapping along with Myra, we all subconsciously can link to a similar situation in our in our life, even if it has nothing to do with what Myra is telling me about her situation. So that that we can all get a benefit by tapping along in a group. And any and if you guys are ever interested in doing this again, uh, we can set up a group tapping situation, and we can pick several different people and work on their stuff, or we can pick one person and work through their stuff. While as long as everybody else taps along they will, believe it or not, be getting an unconscious benefit uh, that is really starting to work at the level of their own neurological system uh, to, to, reduce, um, to reduce ongoing stress. So yeah, uh, any thoughts, comments, any place else you might want to steer me in, in, in these directions. And remember, besides being an expert EFT practitioner, I know a lot of stuff about a lot of things. So you know, feel free to ask any questions you might want in case I might be able to provide any useful information. Nothing in particular? Does everybody have to go at the hour? Did anybody want to hang on and watch me uh, at least try to address this with Myra? So everybody just tap along according to the instructions I give Myra. But you'll see how I, I ask Myra questions so that we can figure out what, where, the, where the energy of the feelings are around the memory of this event. Myra, do you want to do this or is this too personal no, that you don't want to I share? Mean, my, my friend Ivy, we're friends for like 48, 49 years. Yeah. And several months ago, we were doing something over text and she misunderstood something I said Classic. and reacted harshly and that ch changed me it, and yes. now I'm like I'm like I never was before and so, I, so like now I guess I get annoyed easily at her yep. I mean she she was she's not different she's she has some rigidity and stuff but she always had and it didn't bother me as much as it does now yeah. And it all changed from that one comment. And I was yeah. reacting. I was at a doctor's office and it was taking forever. So I said, this is so annoying. And she um, mistook it and thought I was saying,
that picking a place for dinner because she happens to be vegan was annoying. That was the I'm, least I'm, I'm a vegan. I know I can be very annoying. No, that was the least <laughs> thing that was annoying me. You know, like that didn't bother me at all, but she took it. I was <coughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, of I course. Know. Yes. I was reacting to being in this doctor's office four hours. I was going to hang myself. And she just took it personally and yeah. like, went off. Yeah. Anybody else ever have a, a misunderstanding in a communication via a, a, an email that you regret because now it changed the relationship in such a way that you feel bad about it? That's never happened to anybody, right? Just you, Myra. <laughs> yeah, just... yeah, okay. So this is what we do. We start tapping and we say, uh, even though I have even though I have this IV misunderstanding. Yeah, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply so accept everybody myself. in their own mind, just tell their subconscious to go work on whatever their IV misunderstanding equivalent is and just notice if you feel anything different or if you don't, you're just learning how to do some tapping. Right? Even though I have this IV misunderstanding, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this IV misunderstanding, I deeply and completely accept myself. IV misunderstanding, I deeply and completely accept Okay, tapping on the eyebrow point, this IV misunderstanding. misunderstanding. And then tap on the side of the eye, this IV misunderstanding. Underneath the eye, this IV misunderstanding. Underneath the nose, this IV misunderstanding. On the chin point, this IV misunderstanding. The collarbone point, this IV misunderstanding. And underneath the arm, this IV misunderstanding. And tapping on the side of the hand again, even though what I was upset about had nothing to do with IV, and she completely mistook it. She mistook it. And now we've created this disturbance that I notice every time I think about that misunderstood text message with Ivy. I deeply and completely accept myself. And then place your hands over your heart and give yourself a little heart hug and breathe energy into your heart space as if you had your, no your nose in your mouth there. Collect it up in your body and then Breathe it out through that heart space and just relax. And, and notice that you might notice that the first thing you might notice is that you're a little bit more relaxed. And when you think about the problem, you might have a different understanding of the problem or you just might not be quite as upset about the problem anymore. Do you notice any difference? Yeah, and now I think it's a little silly. It was a misunderstanding and I wouldn't want her to be that upset with me about the that's right so do you feel any more encouraged to make sure that you get some clarity around that if it was a silly misunderstanding well I, we did clarify but you know it's stuck inside but it's, me. it's still it's still bug you so so now yeah. so now you feel differently about it that's how quickly eft can shift something like that that's like an almost an ordinary uh, dare i say almost an everyday experience where something can happen especially important interpersonal relationships i mean you're friends with this person for 40 year, years and for whatever reason you're having a bad day she's not having a bad day and some little misunderstanding at the wrong time you know text is such an impersonal communication it gets so many of us in trouble that yeah. whammo and then somebody says i've been your friends for 48 years how dare you say something like that to me and then you feel terrible because that's not what you meant or you feel angry she should know me better than that how she how could she get so easily offended but the whole thing that we're tapping on with the EFT is the disturbance that got re registered around the whole experience. So with the disturbance, which is wired into a nervous system, being neutralized, now we can think more clearly, feel a little bit more better about it, and go, well, I certainly hope I didn't kill a 48-year relationship, but if it was that built on that nothing, maybe this is a relationship that I didn't really need. Uh, right. And of course, if it's a relationship you care about, you know, you call the person, you say, I'm really sorry if you, I know misunderstandings happen to me, but I can take full responsibility and I'm really, really sorry. And hopefully they go, forget about it. You know, but you she did apologize. She yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. But now at least you don't have to be burdened with carrying this 
around with you every time you think about it as, as being a disturbance, you know, going forward. So that's pretty fast. That's pretty nice. And, and that's really good. That really explains how tapping on something seemingly so in, insignificant compared to our real problems can open the doorway to our me remembering things from our past that um, that can come to fore. I mean, very often I'll work with somebody and they, they don't have any memories about anything like that. So I'll just say, well, let's talk. Of, let's just tap on whatever the problem is now. And we tap and all of a sudden they go, you know, all of a sudden out of the blue, I'm remembering this incident that happened when I was seven years old and, and, and I've been bothered by this ever since. And now we've got something to tap on. And those things that happened when you were seven years old, if they're still active, even in your unconscious, they're still affecting you to this day, even if it was no big deal, you know, 50 years ago. Uh, so the more things like that that we clear out of our system, the more we lighten our energy so that we're only vibrating with the best stuff, not um, complex of all of this complicated, difficult stuff that it represents our life experience. And... Um, and there's actually a, a method that we can use with tapping, if we wanted to, to write down a little brief note about everything that we remember that ever was bad in our entire life. And now we have a whole laundry list. If we're doing EFT by ourselves, every morning when I get up, I'd say, what do I want to look at? What do I want to work out? Mm. Man, that first relationship I had that I never got over, that was really bad. Well, even though I'm never going to get over that one, even though that was really terrible. I deeply put accept myself. You start tapping on it, and it starts loosening all that stuff up. And you give it a, a you guess. You say, if I were to guess at how much this still bothers me, a scale of zero to ten, where's the number? And anything over a five or six is really something that is still going to be bothering you. So you want to tap on it until you get the numbers down below a three, or down below a two, or maybe even you look at it and you go, you know, <laughs> that was thirty years ago. I, you know, that, I'm done with it. Whereas before the tapping, that might not have been completely possible. So that's how quickly tapping can be effective if we really start working on things that have some significance in our life. Any other things you want to mention or say about that, Myra? Um, so I think I'm going to play with it a little bit longer after we get off. Yeah. How about, how about anybody else? Did anybody else, uh, while they were tapping... Did they tap into uh, a memory of something specific for themselves that you might want to uh, mention that we can work on? I'm happy to do it. And uh, it's okay to be shy. I, I would say don't be shy, but it's okay to be shy. Uh, this was an informative thing only, and I don't expect that um, uh, everybody is going to come to the table uh, with a long-standing issue. Uh, that there's no way we have the time and the place, you know, and this Zoom call uh, to completely deal with. But I just want you to know that I don't know of anything uh, in terms of our life that if we think about it, uh, that we still carry a, a memory imprint that isn't, uh, that isn't um, something that we can feel good about after all these years and move on then that's a sticking point. And that sticking point can get very, very sticky in our energy systems. And as things get sticky in our energy systems, eventually it'll affect our abilities to be happy. It'll affect our abilities to be creative. And if it gets sticky enough and something stressful comes along that's pretty serious, it can be sticky enough to create a dysfunction in our body's bioenergetic system, which can then show up as a physical problem and it's very well understood that just about every chronic illness that we suffer with a lot of it is lifestyle problem but a lot of it is all stress related and without the stress there's less chronic illness and if we are struggling with chronic illness we might think there are medical solutions and then maybe there are medical solutions that can help us manage it but if we don't go back in time and resolve the stress energetically because that's where the root cause of the problem is then we don't really fix it at the root cause of the problem and even if it's a psychological problem and we go and we have wonderful therapy sessions 
we're not tapping or doing something else like that that is literally opening us up to a place where we can then re-signal and recreate the moment in such a way that it's no longer harmful for us. And when I do work with women with breast cancer, uh, I don't want to be presumptuous, but I want to find out, you know, what kind of stress has been in their lives that's serious in, enough that might get to the point where, you know, the straw that breaks the camel's back turns out to be a cancer diagnosis. And more often than not, I hear, yeah, I know what caused my cancer. You know, my, my sister committed suicide, my mother died of breast cancer, and I just got divorced. Six months later, I got diagnosed. And I go, holy shit. And, uh, and my heart goes out, and then I realize that there's all kinds of things that, that we could do together if they wanted to. First thing you know, I want to do is I want to teach them how to manage their stress with EFT. But then I want to invite them to look at all of these stressful factors so that we can now work with these energetic processes and resolve them as an energetic, a negative energetic pattern that we're carrying in our energy system so it no longer affects us. So as we choose to move forward with our life and do everything we can to heal, uh, that we're giving our body, our mind, and our energy system the greatest potential for healing to occur, even if it's miraculous. And I believe in miraculous healing. So I'm going to hang on for a while in case anybody wants to question, but I'm going to say right now, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to meet you all and to share with me you know, what I'm obviously passionate about because I believe it's that important uh, for everybody to be taking charge of their healing journey and a healing journey, and if just, you know, your weight management is just one symptom of a, of a deeper part of the process of healing, um, then that's, that's how you can treat it. You know, it doesn't matter. We just got to start doing something that actually is effective. And we now have enough, you know, all these years later, we have so much scientific and anecdotal clinical evidence of how effective EFT can be for almost everything, including um a whole section on you know how you can use this for uh, weight management and, and eating disorders so uh, there's plenty of scientific information to be pointed at if anybody is interested in that direction i have a quick question yeah um yeah. are you always using the same response like so no matter what the problem is you're saying i deeply and completely accept myself or are there other responses that's a great question. Um, in order to get people involved with the process, that's the default statement. There are situations where the default statement can't be used because someone is so emotionally, psychologically wounded that they can't say, I deeply and completely accept myself, that that becomes a problem. All of a sudden, the energy gets stuck in the throat and they're crying. So then we're tapping through that. But if you were doing EFT with an eight-year-old, you know, who, um, who fell down uh, and scrape their knee, uh, you know, and they're and they're and they're saying, "Mom, sorry, mommy, I didn't mean." You know, you're not going to ask an eight-year-old to say, "Even though I fell down and scraped my knee, and deeply and fully accept myself," because they don't have the sense to say, "What the hell does that even mean?" They, you would say, "Even though I fell down and and scraped my knee, mommy's taking care of me, and I'm still a perfectly good kid, and everybody loves me." So you put it into context. So eventually, what you want to do is you do want to start to replace that with a more positive statement that's more meaningful but there's a there's um a paradox we, we cannot go saying something that is too positive before we tap on the negative stuff because as soon as you say uh, all right somebody's got a, uh, being re ridiculously radical somebody's got cancer and you come along and you say you got to think positive say i could be cancer and, and you got that people to say, I could be cancer, I could be cancer. The part of their brain that says, I don't know if I could be cancer. I don't have any evidence that says I could be cancer. I don't know if I'm strong enough to be cancer. I don't know if the medical system is, is smart enough to help me beat this cancer. And even though I want to commit myself to beating cancer, you know, is saying I could be cancer actually more harmful to me than accepting that I have cancer and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to approach it because that's more real. So we always want to say something that's real. So hopefully we can get people to even unconsciously accept, I can accept what's happening because it's happening. Even though I have this problem, I accept that this problem happened. Even though I, I'm having this reaction to this problem and that's on me, uh, I can choose 
to be okay even though I'm not feeling good about this. And then at some point you can turn it into a choice, which is a powerful way of rescripting and providing a, an alternate statement. Even though I'm having difficulty controlling my holiday eating binges, I choose to just enjoy myself and know that that's how I am and that's how I'm wired and I'll be okay and if in some point in time I decide that I'm gonna do something about it I'm gonna give myself every opportunity to be as successful as I can and that sounds rather um, verbose but we can invite these verbose statements and in fact even though it takes longer to say very complicated statements the more information we can put into that the better our subconscious goes yeah yeah I know what I know what to do with this tapping signal so yeah, we, we do that. We, we, we change it. And then when we tap enough that, that we've really resolved the feeling of the negative energy part of the problem, then we start shifting to tapping on things that are definitely more positive looking statements. Great question, Ruth. Great question. Thanks for asking it. Okay. I have a question about how I know you kind of specialize in women with cancer. How deep of a trauma can you work through with tapping? Um, specifically, my husband is a survivor of childhood sexual abuse that he's trying to cope with. Yeah. Is that something that he could look into? Absolutely. Um, I'm not a specialist in that, but I, I will tell you um, there is not any level that is too deep um, because even if we can't figure it out, uh, the tapping can work at the subconscious level. But if you are dealing with a memory, or if you're dealing with resisting a memory, or you know, you, you, you can you can start with, you know, even even though you know Uncle you know Uncle Bob you know forced his devious crap on me when I was so susceptible at a young age, um, I feel bad for the inner child uh, that is still suffering with this problem. And I choose to find the best ways of releasing this. And that's a very, very simple thing. But at some point, the little child, the inner child, might signal to you what the, the fear or, or, or whatever else is in there that's an actual emotion that is a, still connected to the energy of the memory of that event. And as you start to allow yourself to feel it, you go deeper. And then you get to the point where you can actually start to feel this stuff. You're directing it more specifically and more specifically. We don't jump in to the deepest roots of the most horrific problem because that's not a great way of approaching with EFT. We start gently and we peel the layers away until it gets more and more and more possible for us to be able to expose ourselves to the horror of the trauma, whatever it might be, and so that we can recognize it, even if it's the adult recognizing it for the child memory. So, yeah, we th 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 the best outcomes with the EFT are when we allow the process to work to get access to the deepest levels of the most significant trauma that we've ever experienced. And unfortunately, you know, some of it's pre-verbal. So, you know, sometimes trauma exists, you know, before you have a, a, a sophisticated enough uh, a, a cognition to be able to put it into words. We don't even know what it is. You know, suppose, suppose suppose a baby of eight months is touched inappropriately. You're probably not going to remember that. Motion you know? detected at your front door. But the feelings might still be there, even though I'm still afraid. Even though I, I still don't feel comfortable being intimate. Even though something weird happens when somebody tries to touch me in that place in that way, and and I don't know what this is about. I deeply and completely accept myself. There's all different ways. Of, of, of using simple psychology, you don't have to be a trained psychologist, uh, a simple psychology to put the language in such a way that the brain and the subconscious mind knows exactly what to do with the energy from the tapping to help you see where the problem is and then resolve it once you see it. It's a very straightforward process. Thank you. A very, very good question. Uh, if he wants a consult, uh, you know, with me or anybody else I might be able to put them in touch with, uh, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yes, how do we get hold of you? Yeah, okay, sure, for sure. It, it'd, be my, it'd be my pleasure. 
Yeah. Good question. Are you putting your email in the chat? Uh, my, I'll put my email in the chat. Okay. I thought maybe you would share it with everybody, but here yeah, goes. Yeah, I will as well. But to I will as well. Everyone in the meeting, my email is um, e m p o w e r empower y o u r your t r u e self true self empower your true self at gmail. And empower your true self at yep, that looks correct. <laughs> that looks correct. Um, yeah, and I have. You know, I have resources to share with people, but um, I'm always I'm I'm always happy to give people a, a rather uh, generous complimentary introductory session, so that just to explain how all this stuff works and to give it a try, and and to give people a sense of uh, whether or not they might want to try engaging with me for a series of sessions uh, to see you know if we can take them in the right direction. Uh, and I'm always usually confident these these uh, these um, initial sessions are good for me as well because this way I can also see whether or not a person is a good candidate for this work. Sometimes people are just not ready to do the work, and I need to understand where they're coming from so that I can approach it at the right level. Uh, but if but if somebody really is willing and uh, and ready uh, to get past you know even lifelong struggles with this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I don't know of a better I don't know of a better tool or, or a process uh, that allows the opportunity for the for the fastest and the best outcome and the most long lasting one. I mean, if we can if we can cure post traumatic stress disorder symptoms from the worst case uh, of of you know war wounds, I, I I believe that tells you what we can do with everybody else's. And and one of the things that I want to mention. Is it's starting to become more well accepted uh, in um, in psychological and neurological circles that our personal traumas are really really significant, uh, and just because it was you know it's nothing compared to somebody whose best buddy's head got blown off next to him on patrol in Vietnam. Uh, it's not about comparison. It's about how it affects us at the time that it, that it happened to us. Uh, and, 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 and society in general uh, overlooks traumatic imprints and just says things like, just get over it or deal with it or go see a shrink or go take a pill. And, that, and that's not the answer because you know that that crap doesn't work. Not that it's crap. It, 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 it's the best attempt that people have you know, to help you, but there are, there, there are better ways. And this is, this is probably the most accessible better way that I can think of. I know EFT is also being used with children all over the place, but especially in third world countries. Well, the story with the third world countries are places like Rwanda and other places like that, where whole populations of people were traumatized horribly in groups at very young ages. I mean, you see your parents get hit, killed in front of you. That's a horrible thing. And there are some people there that stop talking, stop functioning, and then groups of people who understood this energy tapping would come in and train some of the and work with some of the leaders in the community and heal them and teach them how to train the others to tap and have remarkable remarkable results uh, where all of a sudden you know children become children again and it, these horrible things happen but you, they laugh people who haven't talked in two years start becoming verbal I mean really it's quite remarkable and all they do is tap Any other thoughts or questions? Again, I'm available anytime anybody wants to reach me anytime. Uh, just shoot me an email. I'll do my best to get back to you. And I'm happy to discuss anything personally you want. And um, feel free to share this recording uh, with anybody you think that might be interested. Um, and if you want to see you know, more evidence of how other EFT practitioners have helped people with eating issues and things of that nature um there's a pretty good bunch of them listed on uh some of the websites um where i have some of my uh articles published um and i think i've already uh pointed out that spot to myra but i can i can 
you know, there's plenty to read, but the, the, the bottom line is you can educate yourself all you want, you can understand all you want, but without the energetic signaling of the tapping combined with tuning into the nature of your problem, um, nothing changes. We didn't energetically shift anything. So why would anything else shift? We still have the same problem. We might have a better understanding, but the understanding would have to be complete enough so that the brain actually creates a reframe. And saying, even though I have this problem, even though I have this problem, I can I can be okay. That's the bottom line. Are we okay when we think about a problem, or are we not okay when we think about a problem? I'll say one more thing, which might either excite you or make you think that I'm complete crazy. But um, what I do when I work with my individual clients is when I'm not doing straight EFT, which is this work that I've been demonstrating to you, uh, I also have the ability to be able to um, intuitively detect whether or not a thought or an idea or a memory is distressing to their nervous system or not. It's, it's, a, it's a developed sense of intuition, but I have a method that I've borrowed from something called applied kinesiology which allows me to make that determination. Um, and anytime we have a thought about something that is in any way distressing, it's automatically going to resonate in our energetic system. If you were working with somebody who was a skilled uh, muscle tester, they would show you this demonstration where you hold your arm out, and normally if you have no injuries here, somebody pushes on the end of your arm, you can resist them. So when you think about something that you know is true, like, like, you know, if I was to muscle test Myra and say, Myra, say my name is Myra and hold strong while I push, Myra is going to be able to hold strong because nothing shifted in her neurological patterns. But when I say, Myra, say my name is Joan, the exotic dancer, you know, she might laugh, but the part of her brain that knows that she's not Joan, the exotic dancer, is not going to allow me to, uh, to, to resist her, my, this arm push. All of a sudden... Something sends a signal. The muscle strength in their arm didn't change. The energy patterns that control has changed. And I have a way of intuitively um, uh, sensing that. And, and I help people to identify sometimes what the unconscious roots of the problem are when we can't consciously come up with them. Usually EFT allows us to use a process where these things are revealed. Like when we were working with Myra... As we tapped, all of a sudden she remembered this particular event. That happens all the time, and I rely on that as an expert clinical EFT practitioner. But sometimes, and even before I had that status, uh, I would allow this intuitive gift to come in and show up where problems uh, lie and uh, go, oh, here's where the problem is, and people would deny it, and I would, and I would do this little muscle testing thing with them, and they would see how as soon as they thought about it, even though they thought it wasn't a problem anymore, their energetic system said otherwise. And then we would do the energetic clearing work. Sometimes it involved tapping and sometimes it involves other kinds of energetic clearing work that I do. And then they think about the problem again and that disturbance is no longer there. Um, and that's how quickly we can change things when we shift them energetically. And, um, and, and, and that I talk about that on my website, which is... Uh, EmpowerYouTrueSelf.com. So my email is EmpowerYouTrueSelf at gmail.com and my website is EmpowerYourTrueSelf.com. So if anybody's interested in how some of this stuff works. But really, um, I love the fact that EFT is now considered scientifically valid, uh, you know, evidence-based practice because we know we have so much success using it. Uh, which has been uh, verified in, in many random clinical trials. So it, it meets the gold standard um, uh, for the medical psychological system to be able to consider it evidence-based. Yeah. I'm just looking at the way we've shifted the lives of so many people in places like Rwanda and, and Haiti and, and God knows other places all around the world where, where massive trauma has, has struck. Uh, it just shows you how transferable and easy this is to do for with anybody who has an open heart and an open mind to want to do it. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, everybody. My, my pleasure and a blessing for me today. Happy Thank New Year, everybody. Too. Thanks, Thank Myra, for putting this together. All right. You'll send me a link to the recording?
Yes, I will. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Take thank care. You. Take care. All. See you. See you. Bye bye. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. See you.